Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to be showcasing the new Sapphire OS 11 23 H2 ISO. Um, now, you know, something that I've realized is that I've never actually showcased any 23 H2 ISO on this YouTube channel, and the fact that there are actually no showcases of any of my 23 H2 ISOs that are not in Chinese that I know of. That's amazing. Anyhow, so. So I pretty much felt like, um, you know, just showcasing 23H2. By the way, unlike my last few videos, this video is not going to be scripted. So uh, that's going to be um, uh, very amazing, if I have to say so myself. It's going to be um, the partition on the disk selected for installation are not in the recommended order. For additional information about installing two GPT disks, go to the Microsoft website. Well, I mean, I only have Valorant installed on here, and I don't even have, like, uh, the BIOS, I updated the BIOS on this motherboard, by the way, and, um, now it doesn't see the FTPM on the CPU. Uh, if you get this error, and you really just do not care, uh, about what data you have on your drive, this is something you can do, you can just go like this, L to zero, and then just clean, then, uh, convert to GPT, and then exit. Yeah, let's exit again. Don't have to see LS necessarily. Anyhow, so back on the topic of the video itself, I realized that I've never actually showcased a, a 23H2 ISO and neither did anyone on YouTube. There, I'm pretty sure that there is one on Billy Billy. Anyhow, now um, let's discuss the changes in the ISO itself. So uh, as you can see, we have two scripts running right now. We have the time resync script. So what this does is pretty much fix a lot of bugs. Like for example, if you've ever used an older Sapphire OS release, like right now, if you are to download the very old Sapphire OS ISO, let's just say you two releases ago, and you try to complete a CAPTCHA using Cloudflare, you're not going to be able to. This pretty much fixes that. Uh, so I really recommend using this on startup. This can also fix other bugs such as not being able to access websites. It's very useful in my opinion. So I'll let this one run. But there is also the script itself. Now, if you want to get access to the Sapphire web script while it's running, well, uh, you, it's not that hard. It's in the modules folder in C Windows. It's not even obfuscated. The, the, entire, the entire ISO is open source by all means. So, as for the changes, so I added a lot of um, telemetry here. I mixed the disabled process mitigation script with the main script because I, I did not see any reason to not have them in the script itself, pretty much. I added optimizing scheduled tasks to the ISO itself because I realized this does not pre-apply, so I actually have to keep this in the script itself. I fixed this bug here. Shout out to uh, X-Ray Perf. I updated FSU till. And I removed the enable FSE. That's it for the script itself. Nothing else has changed. Now, behind the scenes, I also updated a part of the script, that being the pre-install script, I updated the service disabler, so now it's a lot more minimal by default. Still does not break anything, it's not like minimal services, so don't worry. I've made sure that I'm actually not going to break anything. Next change uh, that would come in this update is the new NVIDIA Profile Inspector profile I've cooked. Now, this is not actually that new, I've... Um, I actually made this while I did not even have an NVIDIA GPU through any desk of my friend's PC uh, for the premium Sapphire tool. So that that's very amazing. By the way, fun fact, if you don't know, on um, after the script runs, you can type in shutdown-a and install your drivers right away, which is something that I'm going to do right now while explaining the changes in this ISO. While at it, since I've opened up the Sapphire tool, I've updated the UI quite a bit, and you can notice it right as you open System Info. This section no longer looks really bad. 
I've updated the buttons so that they actually look like buttons. You know, amazing. And um, I don't have internet. That's amazing. All right, now I have internet. So I also updated the download section, which is going to be noticeable right away. As you can see, there is a search button now. I know, right? Amazing technology. It also looks different. I personally way prefer this, even though it has a, a slight issue that I cannot fix to the design, which is a, I can highlight this. If you don't like this either, deal with it. It's a lot better. Now, it, it loads a lot faster. It consumes a lot less resources, and it's generally just a way better approach. So, I decided to just go with this. By the way, I should probably let y'all know that it's from the old pay tool. I'm going to be making a new video on the premium tool at some point or another. I plan to also do benchmarks for it, but at the same time, I know that people are going to probably be like, um, the, the owner of it made the benchmarks. That's not fair. You know, he, he can rig the benchmarks. Anyhow, so this is not a driver deep load guide, so I'll probably cut this out of the video. So. So, as I was yapping, so, uh, what I've added in the new update is the time resync script, a new NVIDIA profile inspector profile, which, as I've said, I've actually made this while my main GPU was the RX 580, I did not have any NVIDIA GPU, I actually made this with any desk on a friend's PC, just for the premium tool. Now, the premium tool has a way better NVIDIA profile inspector profile, so I was like, okay, I might as well just put this in the free ISO. I updated the post install folder, in other words, I updated the video profile inspector, NV clean install, added the time resync script which runs at startup. That that's pretty much it. I updated the reg file so it disables Windows platform binary table, which is pretty much, you know, when you install Windows and you don't disable the thing in your BIOS that causes the pop-up here to be like install armory crate and you want to tell it go fuck yourself. Right? It disables that pretty much. So thank me later for that one. I also updated the power plan. I added one new setting to it. It I know, right? Amazing. That being um That being this, you know, people were jumping around going crazy when people found processor performance time check interval, right? So, uh, at some point or another, I started doing testing with processor idle time check. And, um, I found my, uh, DPC ISRs were slightly lower with this. So I was like, okay, sure. Anyhow. I also, in the tool, removed disabled threaded DPCs because it's an extremely useless tweak. Updated the Winver. Started using 2A as the default for Win32 priority separation. And I updated the miscellaneous DWords for NVIDIA. That's it for the entire update. Now I know it's not that much, but you know, the premium tool exists for, for the rest, you know, just saying. Anyhow, in the meantime, I'm just going to be setting up the Sapphire tool. I've made an in-depth guide already about this. So, oh yeah, I, I forgot about one thing that I added. Minimal services now gives you a warning, which you can click out of. I know, right? Very amazing. Oh god, these buttons are misaligned. Oh well, I have an auto updater for this, so I can push out an update whenever I want to fix this. And this, so... Why did I do that? I'm not even on a Navi GPU. What? Oh yeah, something else that I did was um, I messed around in uh, auto runs, but it seems like most of what I did did not even save. That's um, that that was pretty useless. That's amazing.
Oh yeah, by the way, remember what I said about mitigations, okay? Disable it only on older CPUs. As you can see, right now I'm on a Ryzen 5 2600 6 core CPU. This is second gen Ryzen. This is acceptable. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the showcase. Also, as you saw at the beginning, I'm on ultralight, so... Let's go ahead and install the Microsoft Store and showcase the fact that it works. Actually, I don't even need the Sapphire tool for this. There's actually an easier way to install the Microsoft Store. You just run this command now and give it a second. Right? Just wait a second. Why do I have two Sapphire tools running? Oh god, that's, that's not okay. Man, one of you watching the video should have told me. Hey man, you opened the tool twice. What's wrong with you? Why didn't you do that one? God damn it. Anyhow, as you can see, now I have the Microsoft Store. And guess what? It works. It's good. I, I can play Roblox if I wanted to. Do I need to log in to get this? Please don't tell me I have to log in. Thank you, Microsoft, for not making me log in. I really did not want to do that. And as you can see, it installs. It works fine. It, it's amazing. This did not apply yet, by the way. That's why it's installing. If you have this, it, it will give an error. So if you, if you see Microsoft Store throwing errors at you, like, Hey, hey, you can't install this. Hey, hey, that's not good. Uh, just uh, re-enable NTFS encryption. And you're good to go. As you can see, the Microsoft Store works on Ultralight now. That is amazing. And uh, if you're wondering about the installation footprint, there you go. If you're wondering how many processes I have right now, because I know a lot of people ask about this, there you go. The processes can go even lower if you use this. But then do not come at me telling me, hey, X doesn't work. Have you tried? default services let's take this as a sapphire os troubleshooting guide right here okay my vpn doesn't work there you go although i'm pretty sure that um cloudflare warp and pia for some reason work with this i have no idea why they just do although this does break uh, a lot of vpns i can't name any besides like nord vpn but there you go this does not install, for example, the NVIDIA driver or NIC drivers. Switch off of minimal services. The Xbox services do not run. Well, that one works. Well, that one also works. I'm gonna give it a second. This should throw an error. I'm not even going to lie. I'd be actually entirely surprised if Microsoft actually fixed this issue. I'm not even joking. I'd be really surprised. Because so far, it should have failed by now. That would be amazing if they did. I'm not even going to lie. Because usually it would hang around here and just like throw an error. So like I'm actually seeing Microsoft pull off a bug fix here. That That is amazing. Microsoft cannot fix bugs like most of the time. So like this is actually... An impressive feat so far because it's actually getting through most of the starting process although i would actually not be surprised if i wasted all my time waiting for this you know they just made you waste time instead oh my god they just made you waste time instead so what you do when you get this error on this exact service is go to gaming tweaks and revert then restart i have to restart now i, I don't want to of course, I'm, I'm recording on OBS. I don't want to restart, so. I don't use the Xbox Accessory Management Service. So I'm just going to redo that tweak. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for Sapphire West troubleshooting in general. So, there, there's not much else you can do when it comes to troubleshooting. Outside of uh, maybe if you're on ultralight, trying super light if something doesn't work. And, um, that, yeah, that's pretty much it for Sapphire West troubleshooting. There's not much else to go into about this ISO. Absolutely nothing. No other changes have been made outside of what was listed here, so. Um. 
how do I end this video off? Let me let me think of a good outro. But give me give me a second. This is tough. Um, I'll catch you guys later with a video about the premium tool.